Apes Mathematic Review, starting with number 14. Number 14, a natural power plant, natural gas power plant is 60% effective. If one cubic meter of natural gas provides 1,200 BTUs of electricity, how many BTUs of waste heat were produced? So um, what we are trying to figure out is the um, waste heat. So we know that it's efficient, 60% of some total. So 60% um, of X, so X is the total amount, and the 60% of some total gives us 1,200 BTUs. And so let's go ahead and do this algebraically. So 60% is 0.6, and of is multiplying, and so an X is our um, unknown. And this is equal to 1,200 BTUs. And so we're going to then algebraically divide both sides by 0.6. And then we're going to do a long division problem, so 0.6 goes into 1,200. Now anytime you have a decimal on this side, you're going to need to move it over to get rid of it. So this one I also need to move over. So you have to move it over in equal amounts. And so now I have 6 goes into 12,000, and that's pretty easy to do in the head. The answer here is 2,000. So our total that we started with is 2,000 BTUs, but it asks us for waste. So what we need to do is take that 2,000 BTUs minus the uh, what we actually got out of the power plant, and that is equal to 800 BTUs was our waste. So that was the waste amount. Number 15, if 35% of a natural acre, of a natural area is to be developed, leaving uh, 520 acres untouched, how many acres are to be developed? And on my, somehow when my file got loaded uh, onto this app that I'm using called Explain Everything, um, it sort of sometimes loads weird and so the, these numbers don't appear on your paper and somehow they appeared on my upload. Okay, so if 35% is developed, that means that if we subtract 100% minus 35%, we're going to get 65%. So we know that 65% is untouched. And so 65% of some total, so we're going to do it kind of the same way. We don't know what the total area is, so 65% of X, which is the total amount of land, is equal to 520, because that's our untouched area. So now we're going to go ahead and divide. And 0.65, we're going to do a long division here. Um, and we're going to need to move it over because anytime you have a decimal here, you got to get rid of it. One, two, and also go one, two over here. Fill in your zeros. Here's our decimal now. And so 65 goes into 520 eight times evenly, and then we fill in our zeros. So the AP test does not allow calculators, but the numbers are going to come out nice and even. So 800 acres is our original amount of land. And so we need to subtract 520 that were untouched and left as natural. And so our developed area is 280 acres. All right. Going on to 16, so now we are on percent change, and do make a note of this formula. You do need to know percent change. I've seen it very often on released AP exams, and the AP exam will expect you to know the formula. Um, they won't give it to you. We don't get a formula list in AP Environmental Science. All right, so if a cyanide in a stream next to a gold mine increases from 240 
parts per million <clears throat> to 360 parts per million, what percent increase is this? So we're going to do our ending number, which is 360, minus our starting, which is 240, divided by our starting. And so this comes out, 360 minus 240 is 120, divided by 240. And you can really see that 120 is half of 240. And so we're going to then say it's a 50% increase, because a half is 50%. Number 17, SO2 emissions from a coal power plant is 400 tons in 2010, and it declined um, to 288. They probably put wet scrubbers on the coal stack. So now we're going to go ahead and solve. So it started out at, oh, I'm sorry, the ending number is 288. The starting number is 400. And our starting number is 400. So now we're going to get a negative number, which is fine because we're decreasing. So it says a percent decrease. So that's fine to get a negative number. So negative 112 divided by 400. And so 400 goes into a negative 112. Here's our decimal, bring it up, add a zero, and this goes in twice. Two times 400, we subtract, and we um, have a remainder of 320, add a zero, bring it down. Oh, it looks like it goes even. 400 goes into 3200 exactly eight times. And so, and this is a minus. So we declined by 28%. So the is over once, twice. And this is a 28% decrease. So when you come out with a negative number, it's a percent decrease. Now, how many average per year? So we need to take um, 2017 minus 2010, and we get seven years. So we just need to take 28% divided by 7, and that gives us a 4% decline per year. So now we're moving on to number 18 with population math. So you need to go back to your binders and pull out your population math formulas and review the formulas. So we need to calculate growth rate, and so if you go back to the formulas, R is going to equal the births plus the immigrants. So our births are 100,000 plus people coming in. So that's immigrant with an I. And this is minus our deaths, which is 70,000 plus people leaving with an E, emigrant with an E. And this is over our total population of 5 million. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do my math up here. So this is 130,000, and this will be minus 120,000. So it comes out at 10,000 divided by 500 million. And you could put in scientific notation, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cancel out my zeros. So I can cancel 4 up here, and I can also cancel 4 down here. So now I have 500 going into 1. So here's my decimal. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to add a 0. It doesn't go in, so now I'm going to add one here and here. Notice I always have more zeros on the bottom than on the top. 500 still doesn't go into 100, so now I'm going to add one here and here. Oh, it goes in twice. 500 goes into 1,000 twice. And so now I'm going to change it to a percentage. So I'm going to multiply by 100, or you can just move the decimal twice. And so my answer is 0.2%. So that is R. So R is equal to 0.2%. R is growth rate. Going on to number 19, if a, growth, if a country has a growth rate of 1%, how many years will it take for the population to double? So the rule of 70. 
The, the AP test really likes the rule of 70, but it doesn't always say use the rule of 70. In fact, it never says use the rule of 70. So the rule of 70 is that 70 over R is equal to your doubling time. Okay, so for us, 1%, so 70 over 1%, and this is assuming that R is in a percentage already, and it's going to come out as years. It's one of those kind of interesting formulas. And so our answer is going to come out at 70 years. If a city's population doubles in 20 years, what's the growth rate? So now we'll do 70 over R gives us 20 years. And so... If you remember back to algebra, you can actually just switch these two numbers algebraically. It's several steps to do that, so you can review that if needed. So now I've got 70 over 20 is equal to R, and so I'm going to cross out my zeros, and 2 goes into 7. Um, it goes in 3 times, and then 3 times 2 is 6. I'm going to subtract, and I'm going to get a 1. Here's my decimal. Make sure I bring it up. I'm going to add a 0, bring it down. So 2 goes into 10 five times. So my answer actually comes out as a percentage. I don't need to change it to a percentage. It actually, in this formula, pops out as a percentage. Because in this formula, for doubling, R is assumed to be in a percentage. So don't change it. 21, would this country be in sub-Saharan Africa or Europe? Well, it is a very high growth rate. It's doubling in 20 years, and our populations do not double in 20 years in Europe. So the answer here is not Europe. The answer would be Sub-Saharan Africa with a very fast growth rate. 22, a city has a growth rate of 7%. How many years would it take to reach 60,000? So once again, we're going to use the rule of 70. And so it says it has a growth rate of 7%. So 70 divided by 7 is equal to 10 years. So it starts out at 20,000. So 20,000 goes to 40,000. And then we double it again to 80,000. So it's doubling, not just adding another 20. That's where a mistake that students would make is, is they would just assume that it doubles to 60, but it doesn't. It's going to double and then double and then doubles. So it's going to go to 40 to 80. So this first doubling occurred in 10 years, and this doubling occurred in 10 years also. But halfway here, it's going to be at 60,000. So halfway between 40 and 80, you're going to be at 60,000. So half of 10 years is going to be 5. So it gets to 60 in another 5 years. And so we're going to add the 10 plus the 5, and we're going to get 15 years is our answer. This is very typical of the type of question that the AP exam will ask. They're going to see if you really understand how to use the rule of 70, and sometimes they have an in-between number, so be aware of that. All right, going on to metric area conversions, and we'll pick that up with the next video.